you're it with a do youtube it's your boy eli the rebel uh i apologize for uploading late on the last episode but um if you haven't seen it click the icon on the top right um we're gonna go jump right into the bowl game like i promised in the last episode but it never happened i can finally go back into uploading this like like i normally would so yeah enjoy the video guys the Emerald Bowl is played in the 49ers Stadium. I don't know what the Niners Stadium was uh, in 2010. But you see here, we not only lost the coin toss, but they also elected to defer. So we're going to get ball to start the game off. First drive of the game does not go to a great start. But however, it's third and 11. Tony Johnson rips back and fires to Brandon Jensen, who has been superb in the slot roll. That's a 26-yard gain for the first down. The very next play, Tony Johnson will get the first down through his legs with this little uh, rollout to the right scamper right there. A 12-yard run. And the drive finishes with this beautiful wheel route by Frank Michaels climbing up the ladder for the touchdown right there to open up the ball game seven to nothing. Um, when you have someone as tall as Frank Michaels, we, we, we preach it all the time, six, seven, two thirty pounder. Um, you know, as a he's listed as wide receiver four, so he's actually the backup slot guy to Brandon Jensen, but he still gets his uh, targets and he still gets his catches. It's a second and nine backed up on their own three yard line. The Antelopes looking to find some breathing room, and who else? Brandon Jensen gets them out of the tough spot. Tony Johnson follows this up here by rolling left and finding Frank Michaels, who previously got the first touchdown, now gets a first down right here on a 20-yard completion. Arizona State has been doing a great job covering the outside threats, but for some reason, they just haven't been covering the slot um, receivers as Brandon Jensen once again gives the Antelopes a first down. So... Uh, Tony Johnson already throwing for a hundred yards within the first quarter Balls on the 35 yard line on the left half, so it's not exactly a field goal range. So Grand Canyon's gonna go for it on fourth and It's all reliable Brandon Jensen. It's almost as if it's going to be the Brandon Jensen show So that will get the Grand Canyon University Antelopes in the red zone However, the drive stales out right here as uh, Tony Johnson gets sacked at the 30-yard line here. McCullough lines up for the kick, angles it, it's up, and it gets over the crossbar a lot easier than I would have predicted uh, prior. But um, it is now a two-possession lead for the Antelopes. Don't worry, guys. We didn't forget about the Grand Canyon University defense, too. Arizona tries to take a shot deep down the right side, but uh, the play is broken up, and that will lead to a fourth down with less than a minute to go in the first quarter. And the punt return right after. They kick it over to uh, the right, which means Jeff Long's going to take this from the left sideline, and he gets the space that he needs and a block on that left sideline. Touchdown, Jeff Long for the Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Uh, spoiler alert, he made uh, not only the freshman uh all-american team but also second team all-american for his special team skills as well and he just put it on display right there another dangerous spot for the antelopes this time it's from the five tony johnson finds space to roll out to the left but finds jeff long on the post and that will get the first down barely Immediately after the first down conversion, take a look at Aaron Wagner. That is how you get into this game right there. Your first catch of 30-plus uh, yards to start the second quarter. Not too shabby, to say the least. Not too shabby at all. It's a third and 10 from the 38. Ball's on the left hash, but Tony Johnson tries to roll right. Throws right over the linebacker. Right to who else? 
Brandon Jensen, look at the stat line right there. Five catches, 94 yards, and we're not even done with the first half. We're not even close. Tony Johnson from the gun, ball in the 23-yard line. He's going to throw across his body to Jeff Long, gets the first down. Now they're officially in the red zone, these Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ball's on the 13-yard line, left hash. So what does Tony Johnson do? Throw to number 13, Mike Stevens, on a bubble screen. Touchdown, Grand Canyon University. It's starting to get ugly out here, folks. It is starting to get ugly. Um, bubble screen was one of the like go-to plays for me um, in USF. So um, when I was editing the playbook uh, with the Texas Tech base, I had to add the five wide uh, gun formation simply for that play alone. And it shows. And it shows. The kickoff after the extra point. We see Arizona State uh, break one tackle, cut up, and go all the way to the 30 yard line that's where they're gonna start the drive but instead of kicking the field goal from the 18 they ought to go for it on fourth all the time in the world and they get the first down 15 yard gain so they're going to have a first and goal from the three on the left hash it's third and goal from the five play action throws to the left side and it's caught in the back of the end zone it looks like the arizona state uh sun devils are gonna go for it on two we'll take a look at this play action pass once again um so there's still some life there's still some life in this game for sure after that pass but on the two-point conversion jackson lines up under center sheds off one sack attempt but doesn't shed off the other one so they will only get six points out of the exchange. 121 left in the first half. This is the first play following the touchdown. Look at Will Mayo, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, he's been, uh, you know, downgraded to tight end too, but he's still getting some targets, believe it or not, and uh, picks up this first down in impressive fashion indeed. On third and 10 from the 42, Johnson from the left hash is able to scramble a little bit to the right side, but gets hit pretty hard and is four yards away from converting. Um, again, it's a similar position from what the, uh, the Antelopes were in in the first quarter. So not exactly in field goal range, but it's a fourth and medium. Four yards is needed to convert. Tony Johnson finds Jeff Long on the right side. And now the Antelopes are in the red zone. It's a first and goal from the nine. Trying to get some points before the half as the Antelopes will not get the ball going into the third quarter. And that's Tony Johnson's first interception on the night. We start the second half of this game like this. Arizona State in the gun, but however, it's Herman Burgess with the pick. He gets hurt in the process. He will eventually uh, come back later in this game. And two plays later, Tony Johnson just does not learn his lesson at all. Clearly throws his second interception of the night. And while normally we don't really show uh, incompletions or broken up plays or things like that, but can you imagine if Aaron Wagner comes down with that ball? Two plays later, Frank Michael says, let me, let me show you how it's done, sir Aaron. Let me show you how it's done. Climbs the ladder easily. No problems whatsoever. Again, we're going we're gonna to reiterate this until he graduates, okay? 6'7", 230 pounds. Two plays later, Jeff Long says, You know what, Frank? I can do the same thing, too. Touchdown. And on the extra point, somebody missed their assignment uh, blocking-wise, and the extra point gets blocked. Yeah, the extra point gets blocked, ladies and gentlemen. Arizona State gets a decent drive going, but on third and five, 
The throw to the left side gets picked off by Quinton Dents, the free safety. And that might just be it, folks. That just might be it. Here's one of the few running highlights on the day. Tony Johnson finally gets the pitch out to Cedric Ollier, his uh, halfback. And Cedric Ollier gets a mean 8-yard run after two stiff arms. And after scrambling to safety here on this play action rollout uh, for Tony Johnson, could have slid later in the run, but two plays later, it simply did not matter. As Johnson is going to find Jeff Long, look at, look at how many defenders are around him. Like, yes, you see two in the picture, but look at the separation. Uh, between the two defenders and Jeff Long. A flag was thrown after the catch, but it was roughing the passer, so Irm Edwards is going to go ahead and decline that. Arizona State still fighting to try to get another touchdown in this game, and uh, look at this beautiful ball on a corner route right there. An absolute dot. However, the quarterback does not make the correct zone read right here on this third and three play. So Arizona State is going to have to settle for a field goal. We got another running highlight to show for you guys here to start the fourth quarter. Look at this perfectly timed pitch to Cedric Collier. Even gets the random stiff farm for an extra five, six yards. It does not matter that Chris Reed gets injured on his shoulder. I mean... I don't like to wish ill on people, but that wasn't going to stop Cedric Collier on that run. A third and 17 from the 15. Left hash. Look at this beauty of a laser right there. Up the right side of the field. I mean, you just gotta, sometimes you just gotta stop and recognize real, man. You really have to. They gotta go for it on fourth. It's a fourth and two. Around the 25, and he gets sacked. It's Austin Smith, the freshman, with 40 seconds to go in the game. It's a third and goal from the 13-yard line. Still looking for points on the board. Tony Johnson throws it, and it's a fourth down. They got to settle for three here, and that will make it a 40-9 to ball game. If they convert right here, it's on the right hash. They're going to angle it to the left. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So a very different outcome uh, happened in our rematch against the Arizona State uh, Sun Devils. Now, our week one encounter with them, we did not score a single point in the game. We got shut out. A whole goose egg was on our side of the scoreboard. But today... Not only an Emerald Bowl win, but 40 plus points. For 40 points to be exact. As opposed to Arizona State's 9. It just goes to show you that, you know, this team has come a long way. Um, and they just needed to get used to, you know, especially the freshmen. Just had to get used to, you know, collegiate football. And then once they uh, got settled in, the rest was smooth sailing, really. We got some player stats for you guys, uh, you know, for both teams. You can see here um, the most important stat that I want to point out is that going into this game, it was an even touchdown to interception ratio uh, for Tony Johnson. Um, but because he won, uh, you know, the, the game against Boise State, number one ranked Boise State to be exact, you know, we gave him his, uh, you know, the eye paint. And uh, he ended up throwing, you know, he, he finishes with a positive touchdown to interception ratio. You know, not bad for his freshman season, but he did not get freshman All-American as uh, the only person that got freshman All-American this season was Jeff Long. And it wasn't even for his uh, receiving stats, but it was more for the special teams uh, positions. Even got second team All-American as a freshman for his return skills, which I will show you you guys later but here's the exact breakdown we had four inter touchdowns to only two interceptions on the day for tony johnson like i said and this is the emerald bowl trophy so it looks pretty nice i'm not gonna lie it looks pretty cool some notable awards to point out here um first being cedric collier got second team all whack despite lance tarker being the starting running back for the season 
Uh, Aaron Wagner got second team all whack. Um, I've already mentioned to you what Jeff Long has done for uh, his uh, his freshman campaign. Very, very impressive. Both Jeff and Aaron Wagner almost had a thousand yards receiving on the year. So as you can see right there, Jeff Long got first team all whack. Uh, second team All-American and freshman uh, All-American, as I alluded to multiple times throughout the episode. Um, I'm just really proud of Jeff Law and being the, uh, you know, the freshman that performed, that really stood out for the team this year. Mike Stewart got second team all whack as a tight end. 6'5", 216 pound freshman. Good for him. Uh, offensive lineman, we got a, we got some whack second teamers, but we got a whack first teamer in Ty Sharp. And not to mention that he is coming back for his senior season, uh, most likely as well. So that's going to be super, super nice to have. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, Zach Jones uh, got second team whack. He was playing a new position in defensive tackle. So that's still quite an accomplishment in my opinion. Um, no awards after that until we get to Ronnie Adams, first team whack uh, in the secondary uh, very, very uh, nice for the sophomore uh, to get recognized uh, all conference. Same for Victor Marcus as he gets a uh, whack second team. Um, and then last but not least, Andy Felder gets a uh, whack second team. David McCullough gets first team whack as a kicker. Um, and that was all the uh, awards for the most part. And before we end today's episode, uh, it looks like Coach Hedwards uh, got offered a couple of places. Uh, the first being uh, Oregon State. Um, they finished the year five and seven. Unfortunately, I mean, I, I guess that's what happens when the when the Rogers twins leave. I guess um, LSU um, also offered Coach Erm Hedwards. Uh, a position looks like the Les Miles experiment um, ends sooner rather than later with a seven and six record. Um, but obviously, for this, um, we're going to decline all offers. But I have started um, an Oregon State, um, you know, side. Um, so this this is basically what's going to happen, right? We have this dynasty that you guys are going to see but then when we don't have recruiting updates i'll just update you guys on the erm hedwards coaching carousel that i'm doing and it it involves uh me me ending up taking the oregon state uh head coaching position um so that happened and then um you know the first season like currently i'm in the like the year two with Oregon State, we had like because season one we finished and I simmed all games and I simmed all games. We ended up finishing eight and four, winning the Pac-10 and winning the Rose Bowl over number four Oklahoma, who were eleven and one going into the Rose Bowl. We beat them through the sim, which was crazy. Um, school budget goes is going to be the same as it was last season. The 36 in discipline because uh, this team interest bar is still a little too high for my liking. Um, I don't know how we didn't get uh, punished, but you know it is what it is. I ran out of points on like the last two or three weeks of the regular season, so that's why I'm gonna keep discipline at 36. So here's the full list of all the seniors uh, graduating. We're gonna start with Will Mayo because he was our starting tight end for season one. As you can see right here, he had 680 yards receiving with six touchdowns and was relegated to only two catches and 35 yards. But, you know, first team all whack in 2010 was probably all reliable target for uh, Danny Turner. Um, Todd, Todd, Todd Cotton had two tackles. Um, Brandon Hall. I don't remember using Brandon Hall at any point, but it says that he got a touchdown this season. So in during the sim games, I guess. So good for him. Uh, Todd Thomas was backing up Aaron Thompson, who's going to be also graduating this season. Andy Felder finished uh, second team all whack. Um, how many tackles did he have? So he had more tackles in 2010 
and more interceptions. So he finished back-to-back second team all whack. Okay, so he was he was consistent for the most part. Um, Victor Marcus um, got second team all whacked um, as well this season. Had more tackles this year than last. Had more interceptions. So it was only right for him to get to get recognized as that. Cedric Roth, our defensive captain, is going to be graduating. Uh, did he get any recognition in 2010? No. But he's just been a solid rock on the right outside. Um, but that's going to be, uh, you know, hopefully Odell Cox will be uh, the guy to step in uh, right away for Cedric Roth. Um, Brandon Demps, our free safety, wasn't the strong, wasn't the starting free safety in year one, but started year two. Um, as you can see here, 40 tackles, five TFLs, four INTs, pretty good, pretty good. Our kicker is going to be graduating. Um, he finishes first team all whack in 2011. Um, missed a lot of field goals in 2010. Good lord. Um, but he was certainly more consistent this year. For sure. Brandon Jensen, our slot guy. Look at this. 39 catches, 735 yards, 6 touchdowns. That's solid work. He had 521 yards in last season. Um, he was still in the wide receiver 3 spot to be quite honest with you so he's been a reliable slot guy for us um sad to see him go but it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be in that slot role next season for sure um cedric errington um a very undersized center finished second team all whack for some reason um so there's that Aaron Thompson, aka Bobby Wagner, is going to be graduating. Um, but fortunately, we recruited someone, um, you know, to fill in that to fill in that spot, which is fine. He did not get any awards in 2010 or 11. Uh, interestingly enough, he had similar numbers in 2010 as opposed to 2011, but he had two more interceptions um, as well. So there was that. He had that going for himself. Um, Aaron Wagner is the sec is is Aaron Wagner no yes Aaron Wagner is the highest rated uh, senior graduating um he finishes um again like these are all wide receiver one numbers uh, 824 yards uh, last season but he got 907 yards this season with less receptions so his average was higher uh, per catch had six touchdowns in both years um only second team all whack in 2011 no awards for 2010 he's going to be graduating and that's where we're going to leave the episode so episode 11 is going to be the full off season starting with the transfers if we do get any um followed by all four weeks of recruiting and then the spring trainings and all that and the schedule making and then our 15 man in-season recruiting board all that's going to be next episode so yeah it's been your boy Eli the rebel i'll catch you guys next week man peace